Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We thank the Lord for another privilege to, um, you know, connect and um, be able to, you know, learn God's word and, um, and to receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. God is a good God and his mercies endure forever. I want to welcome you um, once again, wherever you are listening or watching, viewing, we welcome you in the name of Jesus from every place where you are connected. Glory to Jesus. I'd like us to start by having some, some moment of praying together. I want you to pray, um, you know, wherever you are. First of all, I want you to give thanks to God for his mercies and your forever. Thank him for his blessings over your life. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for, for he is God. Hallelujah. Can you open your mouth and thank the Lord? Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We appreciate you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father God, for, for your church. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the body of Christ. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus, for every single one of your children that is connected today. I thank you for what you are doing in each life by your Holy Spirit. I thank you for where you brought us from. I thank you for where we are now. I thank you for where you are taking us to. I thank you for the body of Christ, the diversity in the body of Christ. Thank you for all your children all over the world. Even people that don't speak the same language that we speak, who don't look like we look, who don't have the same skin color. But thank you, Father, because we are connected through the one and only blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, the everlasting Son of God. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your word your prevailing holy word. Thank you for the power of the prophetic. Thank you, Father, because your counsel will stand and you will accomplish all your pleasure. Oh, we bless you, Father. We bless you, Father. We thank you for what you are doing in the body of Christ today. All around the world, Father, we glorify you. Father, we worship you. Father, we bless you. Thank you for giving us insights, concepts, revelation, foresight, oh God. Thank you for showing us the big picture in the name of Jesus. Thank you for where we are fitted in your plan. Thank you, Father God. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. And we adore your holy name. And we exalt your holy name. Thank you, Jehovah God. Oh, glory to your name. Hallelujah. If you know this song, you can just sing with me. I praise you. I praise you. Oh, Lord. I praise you. I praise you. Oh, Lord. In my life, Lord. I can see what you're doing one more time. I lift my hands in praise of your name. I lift my hands in praise of your name. I praise you, I praise you, I praise you, oh Lord. I praise you, I praise you, oh Lord, in my life, oh, I see what you're doing. One more time, I lift my hands in praise of your name. I lift my hands in praise of your name. Hallelujah. You know, there are times when you don't, 
you don't feel like God is walking in your life or like God is doing something in your life, but I'd like you to know that God is at work in your life. The Bible tells us in Philippians 2.13 that God is at work in us. Hallelujah. Glory. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Somebody say with me, say, God is at work in me. God is working in my life. I may not feel it. I may not see it. I may not perceive it. I may not understand it. But God is at work in my life. Say after me, say, my life is not stagnant. Say that. Say, my life is not stagnant. Say, I'm not stagnant. I'm not static. Say, God is working. God is shaking things. God is moving things in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So that song says, I praise you. I praise you, O Lord, in my life. I see what you're doing. One more time, I lift my hands in praise of your name. I lift my hands in praise of your name. Can you sing that song again? I praise you. I praise you. Oh, Lord. I praise you. I praise you. Oh, Lord. In my life, I see what you're doing one more time. I lift my hands in praise of your name. I lift my hands in praise of your name i just want to say baba oh thank you i just want to say baba oh thank you i just want to say i just want to say baba oh Thank you. I just want to say, Baba, oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, I am going to continue to, you know, um, teach. You know, we are still dealing with the subject of intercession. Glory to Jesus, the prayer of intercession. Now, um, the Bible tells us in the book of First Timothy, um, it's a passage that, you know, we all know. Amen. The book of First Timothy. Uh, yeah, First Timothy chapter 2. And, um, you know, when you read from verse 1, the Bible said, I urge you first of all to pray for all people ask god to help them i'm reading from the new living translation now get your bibles get your bibles i, I welcome you in jesus name glory to god uh, get your bibles and something to write make a note ask god to help them so i'm in first timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 i urge you first of all to pray for all people ask god to help them intercede on their behalf intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them you see that see that's what god wants you to do for all people all right for all people for all people doesn't matter who they are where they are you said yeah i wanted to pray for all people ask god to help them ask god to help them because man is stranded without the help of God. And today we need God's help much more than before. We live in desperate times and, you know, desperate times require desperate seasons of prayer. Glory to Jesus. So said, ask God to help them. A lot of people can help themselves. A lot of people are caught by powers stronger than them. People do things that they don't know why they do it. You know, 
people, people are caught in bondages that are stronger and mightier than them. That's why only prayer is their, can be their bailout. Prayer is the bailout of humanity. So that's why I said, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Hallelujah. So we have been learning about the prayer of intercession, okay? Um, and currently, we are looking at the reasons why we intercede. I, I don't want to go back into, you know, what intercession is and all that, but, you know, I've shared that. But for the sake of definition, intercessory prayer is when you stand in the gap on behalf of those who don't know God, and so because they don't know God, they cannot approach him for themselves, or baby Christians, you understand, who cannot receive from the Lord, all right? Intercession is also the, the rail on which the, the, the move of God, all right, is released on the earth. Glory to Jesus. So um, the future of the work of God in any nation and any region is dependent on intercessory prayer. God is looking for more and more and more intercessors today. The future of any missions, the future of the work of God is dependent on intercession. I want you to think about this. Think about the missionaries that, that came to Africa, for example, all right? Think about, you know, how they succeeded, how they, how they succeeded to convert, you know, my great, 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 great grandfathers from Edenism, satanic worship, ritual activities, all right? They managed to convince them from that lifestyle and to embrace Christ. That is power. They built hospitals. They built schools, all right? They made people to abandon age-old traditions. How did that happen? It was the power of prayer. Those missionaries had people praying for them massively. The prayer of those days was for lost souls to come to, 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 to Jesus Christ and for, for kingdoms, even kingdoms, to be turned to Christ that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. That was the outcry and the burden and the passion of believers in those days. It was not for materialistic things, all right, uh, like, like believers of today. It was not after needs and after issues and after problems and after challenges. I want you to realize that the highest prayer you can pray is not the prayer for yourself, is when you begin to pray for others. And you get more accomplished when you pray for other people and you intercede for them than if you were to be praying for yourself. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. So God wants us to engage this kind of prayer. Job 42 verse 10, the book of Job chapter 42 verse 10, the Bible tells us that, and God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So we are, we are going to go, you know, deeper and deeper, you know, into this passage. But let me share with you, um, you know, um, a, a couple of scriptures. Glory to Jesus. Um, let me share with you quickly a couple of scriptures, you know, still looking at the subject of prayer, all right, and the subject of intercession. Now, I want you to, um, I want you to look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 63. Now, all the prophets, all right, in the Bible were intercessors. Glory to Jesus. Amen. They were intercessors, all of them. All right. And all of them were great men. Glory to Jesus. I mean, if we were to begin to do that study, that's a big, fabulous study on its own. When we start to look at, you know, all these prophets and 
you know, their ministry of intercession, standing in the gap for the nations. God is looking for people who will stand in the gap for their nations. Now look at Isaiah chapter 63. I'm going to read from verse 3. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter 63 from verse 3. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Verse 4, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. You see that? Verse 5, and I looked, and there was none to help. Now, every time God is wanting to do something, he needs help. You know, I know that may baffle some of you and say, what? God doesn't need anybody's help. No, God needs help. For God to do something on the earth, he needs the cooperation of man. Very important. For God to do something on the earth, he needs the cooperation of man. That is the pattern you find in the Bible. For Jesus to come to this earth, God needed man's cooperation. God needed a virgin to submit a womb and to cooperate with God. Otherwise, you know, God couldn't come to earth. If Mary had said no, God will have to keep searching and searching until he found someone, all right, who was willing to cooperate with him for his purpose to be carried out. I want you to realize that God needs help. The, the Lord God will do nothing, Amos 3, 7. The Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret to his servants, the prophets. For God to do things on earth, he needs help. So he said, uh, the day of vengeance was in my heart. The year of my redeemed is come. Isaiah 63, verse 5. And I looked, there was none to help. I, was, I needed help. I looked. There was none to help. Now, listen, let me tell you something. When we say that God needs help, it doesn't mean that God is stranded and grounded. If God calls you to be a co-laborer with him, and that's what intercession is. Intercessors are co-laborers with God. If God calls you to be a co-laborer with him, it's a wonderful privilege. <laughs> because I'm telling you, God has zillions of options, zillions of options. In fact, one time, you know, some people were, you know, uh, uh, some kids were worshiping Jesus and, you know, shouting. And, um, you know, the, the religious folk said, tell them to shut up. And Jesus said, if they shut up, the stones will cry out. <laughs> and you get what I'm saying? So you are the one that has to desire, say, God, don't let the stones replace me. <laughs> Glory to God. But I want you to know that God really do have options. God has options. If you don't arise and surrender yourself to be a co-laborer with God, if I don't arise and submit myself to be a co-laborer with God, we are the ones that will lose out. God will raise help. Help will come from elsewhere. When, when Mordecai was talking to Esther, you know, and Esther was dilly-dallying and saying, oh, and I can't do it. If I go to the king, this may happen and that may happen. He said, hey, listen, if you don't arise, I want you to know, help will come for, for the Jewish people, but you and your father's house will perish. Wow. That, that shocked Esther to her socks. <laughs> and then she said, okay, I'm going to do it. Please go on a fast. If I perish, I perish. Now, what am I trying to say is this. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to tell you is this. It is a privilege to work for God. It's a privilege to be an intercessor. It's a privilege to give to God's work. Don't have, don't you know, have your shoulder blade sticking out because you're giving to God. <laughs> you understand? Whatever you're giving to him, he owns it in the first place. What can you give to the one who owns everything? I want to realize it is a privilege. Anything we do for God, it is a privilege. He said there was none to help. 
and I wondered that there was none to uphold, you see. This is the duty of the intercessor to stand in the gap. Sometimes because of the justice of God, like we saw in previous lessons, because of the justice of God, judgment must be served on evil workers. But it is not in the nature of God to want to destroy people or to want to judge them. But he has to because his justice demands that. And so God will be looking for an intercessor who will stand to uphold, all right, to stay the hand of God's judgment. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, to appeal to God. God is always looking for that. He says, but I wonder there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own hand brought salvation to me and my fury, it upheld me. You see that? Verse six, and I would tread down the people in my hunger. This is not what he likes to do. But because there's no intercessor, judgment has to come. I will tread down the people in my hunger and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. You see that? Glory to Jesus. Amen. Brethren, I want us to know that intercessors play a great role. All right? in the work of God. Very, very important. Now, so I, I, I shared with us, you know, some of the reasons why we intercede. Said intercessory prayers are needed to birth new believers into the kingdom of God. Galatians 4.19, we saw that in the last lesson. Intercession is needed to mature believers. All right. Intercession helps believers to receive. Okay, intercession provides support for believers. We said that. And we looked at the, 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 the experience of Peter in the book of Acts chapter 12, glory to Jesus, to provide support for believers. Now, I'm going to move on today. The fifth reason why we intercede is for gospel missions. We intercede for gospel missions, for laborers to be sent out or thrust forth into the, into the harvest field. We need intercession for the work of God to prosper, for the work of God to be done at this time. All right? Intercessors are needed in order for laborers to be released. Now, Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 to 38. Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 37 to verse 38. The Bible said, Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenty, but the laborers are few. You see? He said, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. He said, Pray, pray, pray to the Lord of the harvest, that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into his harvest. Hallelujah. Pray. It is prayer that sends forth laborers to the harvest. Prayer sends forth laborers. Can you pray where you are right now and say, Father, let laborers be released into the harvest in Jesus' name. Let Father, let laborers be released into your harvest. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, let laborers be released into your harvest. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Do you know that there is a, 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 a ripe harvest among young people? A ripe harvest among young people. Ripe harvest in many nations of the world. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. Many nations of the world are crying, we need help. We need help. We need the gospel. We need someone. Of course, they, won't, they, won't, they don't call it the gospel. They're just looking for answers. In many places, the harvest is ripe, but what is lacking? Laborers. It is prayer that releases laborers. Laborers. Many times you see the work of God suffering because there are no laborers. Hmm. Carado Bosanta, ye macoros, baliki mombrato kateka, librosengete. 
A lot of times, the work of God suffers because there are no laborers. And, and the few laborers that are there, some of them are strained, and some of them are dejected, and some of them are discouraged. I am praying now, every laborer listening to me or watching me, you are laboring in the hardest field. You are laboring for Jesus. Receive strength in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you are not a laborer, God is challenging you now to jump on board. No believer should be sitting down or attending church without doing something. Come on. Come on. Some of you are waiting until somebody gives you a mic to preach. Some of you are waiting until they ask you to do something. Listen, it is your duty to pray and say, Jesus, why did you save me? What did, did you save me to just be going to church wearing a nice dress, you know, carrying my handbag or my, you know, my, my, wear my nice cologne, my nice suit, and then come to church, you know, attend my nice family church. And after Sunday service, go for nice dinner with my family and that is it. And repeat the same routine next Sunday. Is that why Jesus saved you? Is, there has to be a bigger reason why Jesus saved you. Laborers. Labor. Some of you are listening to me. God has called you to labor among young people. Do you know how many young people, how many youth need laborers? How many youth need intercessors to pray? Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many youth need teachers and leaders to guide them? How many children need to be saved and baptized and full of the Holy Spirit? Laborers are needed. If there was ever a time when laborers are needed, it is now. What are you doing? What are you doing as a child of God? Don't you know that Jesus saved you for a reason? I want you to look in the room where you are right now. Any room where you are, look around it and point to something that is useless in the room where you are. Point to something that does not have a purpose. Everything inside your house has a purpose. It is solving a problem. It is meeting a need. The chair you're sitting on is holding your weight. The plates are used to hold your food. The glasses used to drink water. Your, your phones, your devices, your bed, your car, everything has a purpose. Why do you think Jesus will save you just to be marking register and marking attendance at church? For 52 weeks of the year. This is why many Christians are not growing because a lot of Christians are not discovering their ministry. You have a ministry. Ministry is not until you hold a microphone and you are preaching or singing. Everybody has a ministry. Some of you, your ministry is, to, is, is, in, the, is in the marketplace, all right? In the industries. That's where your ministry is. Some of you, your ministry is in the education, education field. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Maybe God will use you as a teacher to redefine the concept of education, to bring in godly concepts. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To bring in godly ideas in such a way that the next generation can be molded for Christ. You have a ministry. Some of you are business people. And that is your ministry. You understand? And God wants to expand your influence in that area so that you become influential as you begin to, you know, create new products and you innovate and in the way you do things. And then people start coming around and they are saying, look, there's something about you. I want to be your friend. I want to do business with you. I want to, I want to enter into partnership with you. And through that, you can connect them to the one who saved your soul. The one who is your king. The one who is your Lord. 
Some of you are called to the music industry, the entertainment industry. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And you hear what I'm saying? Some of you are called to prisons. Maybe you are listening to me now. You've been in the prison system. And God has called you to offer comfort and hope and life and light to prisoners. Some of you are called to minister to people who are sick. I'm telling you, you have a ministry. What am I saying? Intercession is needed to release laborers. Laborers for the harvest. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. Harvest of souls. People are looking for answers. Of course, you may offer them a tract and they say, no, I don't want anything religious. Yeah, they are tired of religion, but they need reality. <laughs> they need Jesus. People are looking for answers. And the job of intercessors is to pray. As the intercessors pray, God will begin to release laborers into the harvest. Laborers will be released. You know, last week, the Holy Ghost cheered me up. He stirred me up in my heart so strong. He said, son, do you know that there are people who are ready to go even to the ends of the earth, but they don't have the means? He said to me, he said, son, there are people who are ready to go to Afghanistan to preach, to Pakistan to preach, to dangerous places in North Africa to carry the gospel, but they don't have anybody to send them. I said, my God. My heart was so touched. Some of you who own businesses, you don't know the reason why Jesus gave you that business. You think he gave you the business so, just, just so that you can be comfortable and make money and buy the, the latest car and the latest phone and take a very expensive vacation. You think that's why he blessed you? You're mistaken. He blessed you so that you can plow that fund into his kingdom and his kingdom can be expanded. That day I told God, I said, God, nobody that I know about or I know of who is willing to go will be deprived because of funds. Nobody, no matter what, my, if it's my $1, my $1 will go there and say, go, yes. And in the last day when we get to heaven and the missionary is saying, Jesus, look at all the souls I want. I'm going to be right there. I say, we did it together. <laughs> because the Bible said they cannot go except they are sent. You see that? Glory to Jesus. People are waiting to be sent. This is the work of intercessors. Intercessors will pray. As we pray, you just say, young people will just say, look, I want to de dedicate my life to missions. Back in those days, you see young people will dedicate themselves to travel to Africa from Europe, from America, to travel to jungles in Africa, to carry the gospel. Some of them died. How many missionaries died in my country? White missionaries died in my country, laid down their lives, their graves, their tombstones are there, never could make it back to Europe. Some of them died of tropical diseases. Malaria fever wasted many of them in the bid to preach the gospel. Now today, many of us cannot even forsake our comfort to carry the torch of the gospel. But you see, as intercessors begin to pray, God will start moving the hearts of young people again. You understand? Yes, young man, young woman, it's great for you to be a lawyer, to be a doctor, to be an engineer, but God's calling may be on your life. You see, young people begin to say, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm trained as a nurse, I'm trained as an e e educator, but I want to go for missions want to go to missions. And you see, as we begin to intercede, the Holy Ghost will begin to move young people. I still remember one man who came as a missionary to my country. Pa Elton was his name. 
Sydney G. Elton. Missionary from you, God supernaturally revealed to him where he was to go. He never knew the place. Got the map and said, where is this place? And eventually he found the name. What? Such a place exists. God spoke to him. God told him. And he took his wife and young daughter and went, they went there. He preached. He, he lived. He labored and he died in Africa. His daughter is now over 80 years old and she is still there, refused to go back to Europe. She said, this is where I'm going to die. Brethren, only prayers can produce such selflessness. Without prayers, the church will be bound in the spirit of selfishness. Will only be, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, and all these things will be added to you. But if we don't pray, we will not seek the kingdom of God. We will be seeking our own. Everybody will be seeking out to buy the latest car. Have they built the biggest house? You know, have the, let, you know, the best breakthrough. You know, have this. That's all people are going to be chasing if there is no intercession. Intercessory prayer destroys the hold of selfishness. It scatters and shatters it. And it releases laborers into the harvest. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So we need this kind of prayer. We need this kind of prayer. Intercessory prayer is needed for gospel missions. You understand? And then intercessory prayer is also needed for people in the mission fields, all servants of God, all laborers, to be effective. Because a person can be called, a person can be chosen, a person can, you know, be gifted, but he is not effective. We are talking about effectiveness, effectiveness. God wants, you know, he wants us to be effective. Glory to Jesus. Amen. That's all we're talking about. Hallelujah. We're talking about effectiveness effectiveness. So intercessory prayer is needed, all right, not only to release laborers, but also that the laborers will be effective. Now, I want to read the book of Ephesians chapter 6, and um, I'll read from the Living Bible. I'll, 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 I'll read from the Living Bible. Paul was, you know, writing to the church. He said, pray for me too, and ask God to give me the right words as I boldly tell others about the Lord, and I, as I explain to them that his salvation is for the Gentiles too. Verse 20, I am in chains now for preaching this message from God, but pray. He said, pray. What do you do to, with your pastor, with your man of God? Do you criticize or are you pray? He said, pray. Pray that I will keep on speaking. I will keep on speaking out boldly for him, even here in prison as I should. Wow. This was a man writing from prison. Writing from prison. Without intercessory prayer, the church will back off at any slight persecution or provocation. We'll back off. We'll just withdraw into our shells into our caves, all right? We would not be bold. But Paul here was requesting prayer. He said, pray that I will be bold, that I will declare the message with boldness, and that I will keep on speaking out boldly for him, even here in prison, even here in prison, as I should. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Beloved, I'd like you to realize and I want you to understand that without intercession, the workers that are on the field will not be effective. They will not be effective. Okay? Field men to be effective. Missionaries to be effective. People working among you to be effective. What, what does it mean to be effective in ministry? It means to produce results to have the results. 
That, that's what it means. You understand? To be fair, not just to be there, but to be effective. Those of you who watch soccer, you know, <laughs> back in the days when we watch soccer, you know, when you see all these, you know, guys playing, 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 and, you know, they, you know the match is going on 30 minutes, all right? Uh, usually, you know, each half goes for 45 minutes, I, I believe. Yeah, 45 minutes. And, you know, they're just playing, playing, you know, this one dribble, 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 play, play, play. After some time, if there's no goal, you just hear the, you know, the spectators singing, all we are saying, give us one goal. <laughs> they just be saying, all this dribble, dribble you are doing, we are not interested. We want goals. Put the, get that ball into the net. We want the goals. We want the goals. And when they see the goals, you see on the, you know, the stadium will just go wild. Everybody's ecstatic. Everybody is jumping and shouting because now they have the goals. Now, if the game goes on, first half, second half, fantastic games, you see all kinds of maneuverings and dribblings and skills, but you don't have the goals. Everybody will say this was a useless game. They were just dribbling, dribbling, no goals. The, what is the purpose of ministers and missionaries to bring the goals to Jesus, to bring the souls to Jesus? And it's the duty of missionaries to support prayerfully, to see that we keep scoring the goals. Every time one soul is saved, that's a goal that is scored. Every time somebody comes to Jesus, that's a, another goal that is scored. We need the goals. We need the goals. We need to score the goals. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Brethren, I am challenging and encouraging you today. God is calling you to stand in the gap. God, God is calling you to pray. Yes. These are the things to pray about. These are the reasons why we pray. All right, the last reason, First Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. I've read that scripture many times. First Timothy chapter, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. I read verse 1 earlier when we started. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good, verse 3. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Look at verse 4 now. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth? That is God's will. He wants everyone to be saved. That's why he says we should pray for them. We need to pray so that the will of God is done. What is the will of God? The will of God is, is that he wants everyone to be saved. God does not want anyone to perish. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. And he has the power to do so. But that power will not be made available, will not be released unless somebody prays. Glory to Jesus. It was John Wesley that said, it seemed to me that God can do nothing for humanity unless someone prays. Unless someone prays. Can you be enlisted to be an intercessor for your church to begin to pray about these seven reasons that I gave why we intercede? Begin to pray. Let me, let me recap the seven reasons again. All right? Seven reasons why we intercede. Number one, to birth new believers into the kingdom of God. Number two, intercession is needed to mature believers. Number three, to help believers receive. Number four, to provide support for believers. Number five, for gospel missions. That means laborers to be sent out into the missions field. Number six, for gospel missions again, for the laborers to be super effective. Number seven, for all unsaved men and world leaders. The Bible said we should pray for these seven reasons. All unsaved men, all unsaved women, all unsaved young people, all unsaved children, all world leaders. Imagine what will happen if 
the leader of, of nations, leaders of nations are saved. Imagine what will happen if the leader of North Korea becomes born again. Ah! That is big emancipation. Imagine what will happen if the leader of China gets saved and gives his heart to, to Christ. Imagine what will happen if the leader of India gets saved. If the top notches in politics get saved and gives their heart to the Lord. Imagine what, imagine that influence. That's the reason why I said we should pray. That's why I said we should pray. I'm praying for you today that the Spirit of God will empower you as you take on this responsibility, this assignment of intercession. May the Lord quicken you. You don't need to know everything about intercessory prayer to start interceding. Start from where you are. Begin to pray along these lines. Begin to pray for believers everywhere. Begin to pray for unsaved souls. Begin to pray for nations. Begin to pray for the leader of your nation. Start from where you are. Start from this information you have. Start from the little you know. And the Holy Spirit will encourage you and empower you as you move on. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let us pray together today. Can you stretch your hands towards me while we pray? Father, I'm thanking you in the name of Jesus Christ for everyone who has listened today and has watched today. I believe that I've shared with them the things that you laid on my heart. Father, I'm praying that in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, your people will be equipped. They will be strengthened in the name of Jesus Christ. They will be mobilized for intercession beyond what I can explain or share or articulate, Lord, you will minister to their hearts in the name of Jesus. I thank you for doing it. I give you praise. Father, use these teachings in the name of Jesus to raise hundreds and hundreds of intercessors everywhere. That someone would say my intercessory ministry commenced after I listened to that teaching. After I watched that broadcast, something was fired into me. Lord, wherever this will be watched in all nations of the earth, raise intercessors, oh God. Raise intercessors for the Middle East. Raise intercessors for Africa. Raise intercessors for Asia, for Australia, for the Pacific nations, oh God. In the name of Jesus, for China, raise intercessors everywhere, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Quicken and stir your people by the power of your Holy Spirit. Ruzipa Montayaka, Lege Brodo, Edrazagundo, Lemedo Braca Tugaba, Gemamboso to Liga Bros and Rama Dugabaza. Father, thank you for doing it. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining today. And, um, you know, to come your way again. Next time, may the peace of Jesus Christ be upon you. God bless you. Please, thank you for sharing. Those of you who are sharing, keep sharing this. We need these messages to go global. Please continue to share and share and share. God bless you as you do so. In Jesus' name, amen.